don't care. I don't care about the rules. No. No. I make the rules. I make the rules. I'm an admiral. I'm a navy admiral. I make the rules, boss. I don't care about you, boss. I make the rules. Guys, welcome back to our new video here. As you guys know, there's a lot of another change is going on with the Navy. This time it revolves around um, people getting separated due to failures of the PRT and the PFA. Okay, so there's a lot of moving parts, there's uh, a lot of speculation. I'm gonna try to make this as bare bones, as civilian oriented as possible because I'm gonna be using a lot of terms like billets, um, higher tenure. Uh, PFA. I'm going to be using all these different acronyms that you guys probably don't know if you're not active duty yet. So just bear with me. I'm going to try to explain everything as much as I can. The Navy likes to change shit up all the time. All right, so in the Navy, everyone knows the Navy is one of the most easy branches for physical standards. You know, we're living on a ship. We're not going around rucking, hiking with 50 pounds in our back. But we do need to have a baseline fitness level. All sailors need to have a baseline fitness level where if there's an emergency that goes down when you're out at sea, you can react, you can move quickly. You can go up and down the ladder wells with a, you know, with some, with some giddy up. So originally before they changed this rule, if you failed two physical fitness tests, I believe if you failed two, I want to say within two or three years, you were getting separated. If you didn't pass your weight, if you didn't do the run in a certain amount of time, if you didn't do enough push-ups or sit-ups. So if you failed that twice, you would get separated. It wasn't a dishonorable, it was like a general discharge under honorable conditions, yada, 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 but you were done with the Navy. So what a lot of people would do is <laughs> they'd eat their way out. They'd eat their way out of the Navy. Say, all right, dude, I'm done with the Navy. There's a lot of people that just wanted to get out early. Obviously, instead of making up mental problems, you know, like that's a big way people get out is if they're having mental issues, um, mental health. So instead of faking that, they would just gain a lot of weight. Dude, cake. Cake is on the menu, boys. But now as of today or yesterday, they released all the new rules for the physical fitness tests in the Navy and getting processed out. Now you do not get kicked out of the Navy. But before we get exactly into these new rules, there is some speculation as to, all right, why are they changing this up? Why are they trying to retain more sailors? Why are they not letting people get out anymore? Well, if you guys did not know, a couple weeks ago as well, they changed the higher tenure. That means if you are, for an example, an E3, you can now be an E3 for up to six years. If you're an E4, you cannot be an E4 up to like, I don't know, I think it's like 10 years. If you're an E6, you can be in for like 22 years. You don't have to make rank anymore. So obviously the Navy is having problems recruiting new sailors. Too many people were getting out. They're, they also had early separation chips that they were giving sailors. So if your four years is almost up and you're, you've done like three years out of your four, people were putting in early separation chips, which let them get out of the military early. So they stopped that. They changed the, the new rules for the physical tests where people can stay in. And they did the higher tenure where they can keep more sailors longer. So the Navy obviously messed up. They let too many sailors get out and people aren't joining as much as they were before during the surge in the you know middle 2000s when the economy was really bad. Now the economy is doing decent. You know, it's on the up and up. So not as many sailors are joining. We need more people. The recruiters are hurting. The Navy's hurting. Billets, jobs in the Navy or billets, like certain positions are not getting filled. Jobs are undermanned. So what does the Navy do? The Navy has a history of using the physical fitness tests as a way to um, work the manning of the military. So right now we need more people. Okay, so now that we need more people, we're not kicking people out for failing the physical tests. What they are now doing is if you fail a fitness test when you're active duty, they will put you on FEP. FEP is a program in your command where you have to go work out a couple times a week. There is a CFL, a command fitness leader. I believe that's what it's called. And he is in charge of everyone in your command that fails the PFA and they are in FEP, and you have to work out a couple times a week with this person. So now they are making it mandatory for every single person that fails to go into FEP for the whole six months, for the whole cycle, until you take your next physical test again. Also, if you fail, you're not getting kicked out, but you cannot make rank. 
um, you won't be able to advance. Also, instead of getting kicked out right when you fail your two tests, you won't be able to re-enlist. So the Navy is working all their little policies, all their little rules like usual to make sure the manning levels are up to snuff. Is that the right term? Up to snuff? So if you look at these new rules with no bias, it is kind of good though because now sailors can't eat their way out of the Navy. You can't just get fat and fail your way in and fail two of them and get kicked out. Now they're keeping you. They're making you finish your whole contract. The bad side of the coin is people are like, okay, I'm just going to get fat now. Who cares? I can't get kicked out. I'm just going to eat. But then you're forced to go on FEP and work out a couple of times a week. Like you're forced to do that. You have to. So that's pretty much it. I know it's kind of confusing if you're not in the military, all these terms, all these, all this lingo. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I'm using certain acronyms and you're joining the Navy, I recommend you go through this video, write every acronym down that you don't know and look them up. There's a Wikipedia for Navy slang that you can learn all this stuff. You know, just go through this video and be like, oh, what the hell's a FEP? What the hell's a PFA? What is a billet? I also have a Navy lingo video. I did a couple of videos about Navy lingo. I'll have that linked above so you can check that out. But all right, man. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. All these new changes, like usual. Good old Navy, hoo ya. It's kind of hard for me still, you know, uh, to wrap my head around a lot of these um, terms because I'm not using them every day. Although it's pretty ingrained into me, like I know what all this means. It's just hard to sometimes to um, explain it to you guys in a way where it makes sense and you're not getting corn fused. Thank you so much for all the support. Man, you guys have been awesome. Branded videos every day on the channel. I need to stop clapping. I do that too much. It's a habit. All right, Poppies, I'll see you guys very soon. I uh, already said that. Instagram, social media, everything below. I got a Patreon if you want to check out my description. And uh, my boy, Papa, he's a good man, and he's got a great plan. My boy, Papa. I make the rules. I don't care, Papa. I'm an admiral. Maybe I, I don't care about the rules. I'll make my own.